And yes, that is one of the standout tracks from a CD, which we've been playing for quite a while. And it is from a very talented multi-instrumentalist, singer, songwriter, and producer who hails right now out of Albany, New York, just about two and a half uh, hours away from the studios here, the upper room with Joe Kelly here. His name is Drew, and the CD is called Dreamin'. That was a track called Hold Me Down, which also features uh, rock contributing on that. And without further delay, I have Drew on the air, and I'm going to welcome him to the upper room with Joe Kelly. How you doing, Drew? I'm doing fine. Thanks a lot, Joe. And How are you? I'm doing great. Yeah, right. I know you were watching a little basketball. Oh, yeah. Have they started the second half? Uh, not just yet. Not just yet. They're, they're getting ready to pick it up in a couple minutes. And, and we were talking off air about the Lakers being your team. So, so did you uh, blow the roof off your home yesterday? Uh, pretty much so, yeah. I, I kind of screamed and jumped and ran through the house, and uh, the wife and the kid thought I lost my mind, but it was cool. It was cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, see, I startled my wife the other way around because uh, I, I wanted Sacramento to win, and when, when Ori hit that shot, that was I was – I was a little down, but I'm a Knicks fan, so. Ah, well, <laughs> oh, my God, you're a Knicks fan. Yeah, it's been a rough oh, year. Yeah, 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 yeah buddy. They, they've they been having a, a real hard way to go for a little while here now. Right. Yeah, we expect them to pick it up sometime soon. Yeah, mm-hmm. cyclical. But let, let's talk about your record and uh, Dreamin'. You, you just uh, have put together a standout record from start to finish. And uh, what, what was the genesis? I know you work with a lot of different people. Um, but for uh, dreaming, putting this together, how did how did it come about? Um, <laughs> that's kind of interesting. Um, pain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I I I guess you can say pain, suffering, uh, uh, that kind of deal. Mm-hmm. Um, in this instance, I don't know about art imitating life so much as it being just what I lived through. Okay. Um, everything on everything on that CD. Um, was really something that was really closely related to my day to day. Uh, I just pretty much kept it true to form. You know, whatever I was going through um, is how I write. You know, uh, I don't pretty. I don't try to mix words too tough. I just sit down and whatever lyrics come to mind in, in whatever given situation, I just write it down. And then the next thing I know, I'm writing music to it. And that's pretty much how it came down. Now your background, you you play a, you know, practically everything on on this record, right? I played everything. On okay. It. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. so, uh, what kind of instruments did you use? What or what what would you say is your strong point? Your strongest uh, instrument that you play? Well, uh, in the past, it's been keys. I mean, you know, I I pretty much did the uh, did the entire uh, album in a in a MIDI uh, MIDI lab. Okay. But uh, at the same time, uh, I did use a lot of live instrumentation like. Uh, you know, a Fender bass, and uh, um, I used an Ovation acoustic, electric acoustic guitar on a lot of the tracks. And uh, fast becoming my my number one love in this game is uh, is the guitar. Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, do you, you play practically every day? To keep yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, the 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 rehearsing goes on nonstop. Um, I mean, I, I very seldom put the guitar down now. Um, Keys are what I what I originally started on, but uh, I just I just absolutely have always loved the guitar. And once I picked it up and I really started fiddling around with it, um, it's starting to come pretty natural. I mean, I just read books and just move along from there. But uh, I I like the way it came down with this whole CD, and uh, I'm trying to make it more part of the actual live performance than what you hear on the CD as well. See, that, that's great music to my ears because, you know, I probably you'd agree with me that R&B radio is missing that, that guitar right up front, live guitar. So, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. There's, there's a lot of sampling and a lot of looping going on, but uh, the real thing is the real thing, and you, you just cannot touch it. You know, it doesn't get any better than that. So your background, uh, you've, you've got such a storied uh, music uh, background. I do remember processing the do rags. <laughs> uh, stop playing, yeah, you do. I I definitely do, and oh and God. the styling and, and the, uh, you know, the album coming out. Yes, I go back that way far. So. Oh yeah. wow. So. Yeah. Yeah. That, 
that was that was a good time. Um, that so was you, a good time. So, so you grew up uh, in Buffalo, New York. Yeah. And uh, got yourself connected with the Stone City crew. Exactly. And uh, how how did that come about? <laughs> well, my big brother is Levi Ruffin. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, he was the uh, leader of Stone City Band. Mm-hmm. And uh, how it panned out was, I, I just uh, I heard about an audition. I mean, I, it, it was just you know something that came to me because at the time I was. I was a dance instructor at, uh, at Sherry Martin's out in Williamsville. And uh, when I heard what was going on, I said, well, you know, I'll, I'll go down there and, and take a shot at this. And uh, just so happened to walk in, do the audition, and nobody knew who I was. You know, they, they just heard my first name, and that was it. And went up in there, and I got the gig. And the next thing I know, I ended up doing uh, choreography for process and the durags. And uh, I, worked, I worked alongside Pops, who did the uh, choreography for the Temptations. Mm, and wow. uh, from that point on, it kind of moved from me doing a little, little of this, a little of that. I did some valet, some security work, and uh, uh, then it kind of introduced me into the studio thing as well. So, you know, I, I, I guess I kind of got the bug from that. So, do you still have the steps? Oh yeah, I can still move. Now. <laughs> I can still shake my fanny now. I ain't right, got a right. problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so how's um, I. I How's Levi doing, by the way? Levi's doing great. Mm -hmm. um, as a matter of fact, he's my mentor. I okay. Mean, you know, it, nothing moves un, un, unless he's he's pretty much given his okay. Okay. Um, we we stay in touch by phone and and through email and everything, and uh, it's it's pretty much like every other day we're on the phone. Uh, he's writing music uh, at home in Buffalo. And uh, when I get done with my thing over here, you know, I, I, I send it to him and he gives his critique and he lets me know what he thinks I need to work on and, and we go from there. You know, he's, he's been my backbone in this thing forever. I mean, from the time I decided to do this, he said, all right, if you're going to do this, then, you know, do it well. And I, I think I've, I've finally gotten to the point because he, uh, he gave me the nod on this CD. He said he, he really enjoyed what he heard and that meant a lot. And of course, uh, that that's great mentoring coming from one of the guys who was part of one of the top funk and roll bands. At least when I was growing up as a, a teenager, unbelievable shows. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. He's a bad man. He's a bad man. I love him much. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So um, why don't we get into another track off the Dreamin' CD? And you know the the way you have the CD set up, it's kind of like an A side and a B side with the the up tempo. Right. And wrapping uh, the second part, portion of it with the slow jams. Exactly. Um, what was what was your thinking going into that? Well, I, I mean, uh, for me, basically, I felt like uh, to listen to a CD, you, you want to hear something that's going to make you shake your behind, mm -hmm. you know. And, and then at the same time, when, when you get into a flip side of the CD and you want to hear some ballads and whatnot, you pretty much don't want your groove disturbed. I mean, you know, if it's going to be a slow tipple side of, of a right. track, you know, you want to keep it consistent. Right. And um, I just wanted, uh, wanted my CD to tell a story front to back and not interrupt anything. You know, when you moved into one area, I wanted you to stay there and really take a listen at the lyrics and, uh, and the content. And uh, folks listening right now, they can go to www.nokiss.8m.com and the 8 is just the, the number 8. Right. And you can find out all ordering information. Uh, any other sites? I'll see uh, you, baby. Yeah, you can, you can go to uh, www.cdbaby uh, drew slash R&B. Okay. And uh, that will take you to the page where you can pick it up. We're also going to be shipping on CD Street in a hot minute. And... Um, I'll be available over in your area very shortly um, at, uh, for your entertainment and uh, at Best Buy. Oh, cool. Yeah. So people are going to be able to easily pick it up, and that's, that's great coming from an independent artist. So. Right. Yeah, yeah. We, we've been working on it. We've been working on it. Yeah. We, we locked down a little uh, independent uh, distribution deal with uh, Trans World. Oh, okay. So uh, we're going to move it around in, in certain areas throughout the U.S. within the next month. All right, so uh, let's get into one of the uh, slow jams that we mentioned, and people uh, on their uh, holiday weekend can maybe uh, feel this one, I'm sure. Okay. They're listening to Parks in Bridgeport, and uh, this is called Ashamed, 
Yeah. And really nice vocals, both on the lead and, and the backing vocals. You, you did all the backing vocals as well? Exactly. Uh, <laughs> how, how many tracks, how many layers on that? Do you remember? Um, actually, that's six part. Okay. Six part harmony on the back. So my special guest right now is Drew, and his CD is called Dreamin'. And this is The Upper Room with Joe Kelly. And this is Drew with... I told you the brother's bad. That is Drew from his Dreamin' CD, and the track is called Ashamed. And we welcome back to the Upper Room, Drew. So, right. yeah, what a, what a great uh, sound and diverse sound. What, what did you, uh, before you started getting in with the uh, the funk and roll out of uh, Buffalo, what were you growing up uh, listening to? Oh, man. Um, Shy Lights, Delphonics. <laughs> Uh, right, right. I mean, just just real, real old school uh, harmonizing. I, I mean, it was, that was the only thing that was going on in Buffalo. I mean, everything you heard, these guys could they they just could actually blow. Uh, there used to be a group of guys down on the corner from me. There was a liquor store on the corner, and mm -hmm. if you walk down there to go to the grocery store, there was always about eight or nine guys out there, you know, drinking their little wild wild Irish rolls and whatever. <laughs> And they'd be standing there harmonizing, and it was incredible. So uh, that, that was kind of stuff I kind of geared to listening to the radio. You know, whatever had some real thick harmonies, I was with it. So how, you know, Buffalo, do you get back uh, once in a while and see how things are? You still have family up there? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, a ton of my siblings are there and uh, nieces and great nieces and great nephews and uh, i mean it, it just goes on cousins everybody they're still at home so whenever i get a chance to get there i get there it's not that far it's not that far a few hours from here and you also spent some time down in atlanta right well a lot of my a lot of my uh band members did when i was playing with in flight okay and uh they all went down to atlanta and they're all playing with uh churches and whatnot now um, but hopefully I plan to get a couple of those guys to, you know, back into this game and uh, see if we can do a few things. Now, what made you uh, migrate over to Albany, New York? Actually, that was, uh, <laughs> that was a relocation from a corporate position I had okay. um, a few years back. And uh, they actually relocated me out here to, uh, to run a company here. And uh, once I got here, I just... Stayed, you know, <laughs> I worked for them for quite a while and then uh, bought a home. So uh, I just decided, well, I might as well lay down some roots and make it happen from right here. Mm -hmm. and, and you're trying to, to, to ch shake up things with the, the live scene there. I know, you know, we were talking off air that uh, there's not a lot of places to play, but hopefully things are going to be changing, right? Yeah, that, uh -huh. that's the way I'm looking at it. I mean, you know, it only takes a, takes a couple of shows to really, like, break something open and Maybe that'll make something else move in uh, in my favor here. At least they got the R and B station on, right? <laughs> exactly. Thank God. <laughs> right. Woo! That was like pulling teeth right, right there. Well, well, down here, even even in cities such as New York, you think progressive, progressive. It, it's you know, it, it's not like when Frankie Crocker was doing radio. So yeah. I, I guess it's a widespread problems so. yeah i know yeah. I'm, i miss him too yeah wow. i miss him yeah definitely another buffalo boy oh that's right yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i i you know i grew up listening i'd send him emails you know before he passed but you know he'd always respond and stuff like that and yeah he's yeah. a nice guy yeah very nice man so putting the band together and uh taking it out uh in support of dreaming what what kind of things are you looking for in the band and what are some of the, your uh musicians kind of musicians you're going to bring well uh basically I'm, I'm 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 just looking for a real feel for for the album i mean the, the album has a whole um different emotional thing happening with it from track to track and i, I just want these guys to 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 feel it the way i felt it um one guy who's playing with me uh eric austin he used to play with uh lucky and james peterson Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, there's another guy, Rob, who stays around the way. He used to play keys for uh, Melbourne Moore. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are a couple of cats that are going to get down with me. I'm, I'm still searching for uh, the right uh, lead guitarist and whatnot, but uh, it's coming along. I've got a couple guys that are working out on it, and hopefully we'll be ready to go very shortly. So on stage yourself, you'd be playing keys and, and singing as well? 
I'm going to play some keys, I'm going to play this guitar, uh-huh. and I'm going to shake my butt, and uh, we're <laughs> going to make this thing happen. Now, I mean, I want people to know that they came out to see a show, you know, and that uh, we can do some everything, you know. We can right. do a little dancing, we, we're going to do a whole lot of singing, but most of all, we want you to just feel it. When you leave, you go, well, okay, that guy is no joke, and that, that's what I want him to say. And folks, if you have uh, just tuned in, my special guest right now is Drew. And Drew has a great CD out, which is called Dreamin'. And Dreamin' is available. Uh, let me give you a couple of the, the spots where you can pick it up. You can go to cdbaby.com. And uh, Drew's just punch in Drew, and uh, it'll come right up his page. Also, the website, www.nokiss.am.com. And... Uh, also, it's going to be in stores very, very shortly down here, right? Right, FYE right. and... Uh, Best Buy. Best Buy. Mm-hmm. So that, that's going to be nice to have it available, and uh, you work. You got a great uh, distribution set up. Yeah. Yeah. How, before we get into another track, I wanted to ask you about the independent route and uh, some of the struggles and, and some of the successes uh, thus far, <laughs> if you wanted to talk a bit about it. Yeah. Well, uh... I mean, the, the success of it was, was just the fact that it got done. Um, and it got done off, off, off the sweat of my brow. That, that, that right there meant a lot to me, um, that I had a chance to, to really create and not have to go through uh, some A&Rs and everyone else trying to tell me what they think is some good music. And uh, getting a chance to really just get off from my heart and, and make this thing come down. Um, downside, it's 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 a financial struggle. Right. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I, you know, it takes money to make money, and 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 you pretty much got to put your all into it, and everything that it makes, you have to put back into the company to make it happen. But um, you know, it, when it when it's your baby, it's your baby. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just like having kids. I mean. Once you have them, I mean, no matter how hard it is, you stay stuck on it. You know, right. you have to do what you have to do, and you love it just like that. So, uh, you know, it, it, it swings both ways, but I, I enjoy the fact that, uh, that we can do some good music around here and not have to go through the critique of someone else in order to get it out there. Right. So uh, no turning back, right? No turning back yeah. at all. No turning back at all. And we've got a couple other artists coming at you before the end of the summer. Right. So uh, why don't we get into uh, another track, and then we'll come back and talk about some of the artists on No Kiss Records, on which the uh, CEO, Drew, out of Albany, New York. And uh, let's see, we're going to turn the tempo up a bit and right. go with uh, Ooh Wee featuring Tech, right? Yep, yep. And uh, this is on Dreamin' from Drew. We'll be right back. Yes, another standout track from the CD, Dreamin' from Drew, who's my special guest. And, and thanks so much for taking uh, time out today. Not a problem. Yeah. Not a problem. Thank you for airing it. I'm, I'm, I'm loving the fact that you're playing it. No, nah, it's, it's great and, and features uh, a, lot, a lot of styles I grew up on, but it's just no classifying. It's just, just great music. And, uh, you know, we mentioned a little bit uh, before we got into Ooh Wee that, uh, no Kiss Records, on which you are the CEO and and working real hard with different artists. Um, what, what's come? Well, first let's talk about some some folks who made appearances on this record, and maybe talk about some new releases. Right. Uh, well, I mean the the guys who are who are making appearances on this one, um, the analyst. Uh, we have his CD out there right now. Um, we're we're stroking him on uh, CD Baby as well. Okay. Um, you could just type in uh, the CD Baby thing and, and go to the analyst, and it'll bring up his page. His CD's out there, and it's, it's smoking. A uh, real different um, type of hip-hop okay. type of movement. Um, Angela Taylor, who shows up on The In-Between, um, she has a solo project, project that'll be out. Uh, hopefully within the next two and a half months, we'll be, we'll be finishing up with her. And uh, we'll be putting that out. She's got an air about her that's, wow, I, I, I mean, it, it's kind of hard to describe, but if I had to say she re- would remind you of anybody, she'd remind you of Phyllis Hyman. Oh, wow. The way her vocals are. She's right. really strong and beautiful lady and uh, real positive in her, in her vocal style and, 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 and the lyrics that she writes. And that that's a real seductive track you guys do together, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah. Talking about the mood setting, right? <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. That that right there, that track could have gotten me the sofa right. had it been heard before right. this thing was done. But right. uh, yeah, yeah, she's she, she's a, a oh man, she's a phenomenal singer. I just I, I just love working with her. And she's also based out of Albany. Yes, she is. Okay. And uh, the next guy would be Eric Austin, which was the guy I was telling you about who uh, played with Lucky and James Peterson. Um, we just completed his solo project as well. So uh, that's going to be 14 tracks deep. And uh, this guy, straight up funk. That's how he gets down. Mm, and uh, cool. beautiful, beautiful cat. He's, he's got vocals and he plays his face off. You know, uh, yeah, I think, I think this one is going to move something. So, so it's great that you're running with some talented cats. And, um, you know, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the influence of hip-hop. Um, obviously, uh, worked into your record. Did you, uh, when did you first come in contact with hip-hop and, and feeling it for, for your own music? Uh, first time that I really got into hip-hop was um, mid-'80s. Um, I actually, when I first started writing music, um, I actually was a rhymer. I was a rapper. Okay. So uh, what I did was I wrote music for my god brother Israel, and uh, I would do, you know, uh, write some lyrics with him, sing some backgrounds with him, and then I would go on hip-hop in here and there and do some rhyme parts. And uh, we, uh, we actually had a, had a couple bites with Full Force back then, but, uh, you know, it, nothing came out of it, but, you know, I just kept it moving. And uh, ever since then, I've been listening to a lot of stuff that's going on, and my little brother Jason Taylor, he's doing his thing out here. As a matter of fact, his album is done, and True Crooks will be out shortly as well. Uh, he's a major influence on me as far as how this hip-hop thing comes down. Mm -hmm. So uh, I stay stuck to it, and he's also on the CD as well. How about as far as, uh, you know, we were talking about the live band, and what, what do you see that needs to be done for, for a live scene in, in cities such as Albany, New York, and even cities in here to, to make it happen? What, what's it going to take? Well, basically what, what it's going to take is uh, a lot more musicians really trying to get out there and really do it. I mean, you know, it, there's so much going on in this area as far as uh, rock bands are concerned, and, and I don't see a lot of R&B or funk bands really trying to get out and, and create an audience. Um, when they do go out and play, it's, it's more of this little bitty party type of deal, but, you know, they never really get out to appeal to the masses or go to places that do have, you know, the room to take in a mass of people. It's mm -hmm. like they just won't take the time to, to really, like, put themselves out like that. Um, for me personally, that's the thing. I, I, I'm, I'm feeling like the minute I can get out and I can really play and let folks hear what I can do, then it'll take care of itself. You know, doors and venues will open. And, uh, you know, you just got to be stuck on it. You have, to, you have to stay stuck to it in order to make anything happen. How about uh, besides your own music and working real hard, producing other artists, uh, what do you listen to uh, other than yourself? Um, I don't even listen to myself. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> from, from, from the time that I did this CD, uh -huh. I, I, I don't even listen to it. I, okay. I, I haven't even listened to it. I, I really sit back and, and I, I just concentrate on, on my other artists. I listen to a lot of jazz. Um, I'm a huge Prince fan. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. I love Mint Condition. Um, and I hate that those guys broke up. Oh, oh yeah. That, that was like, okay, somebody pulled the stake out of my heart now. You know, the one real live band that was out there doing it, and, and now they're gone. Um, then again, I listen to some other stuff like, you know, The Roots. And um, basically, I just stay stuck on a lot of jazz music. I, I'm just, I'm really into jazz and, and a lot of old school vibe, the stuff that's out here. Everything sounds the same now, and I'm hearing the same loop, so I don't listen to too much that's going on on the radio. Every now and then, I, I check something that's hot and... You know, I'll, I'll run with it. But other than that, I stay stuck on the old stuff. You make your own fun, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I was I was going to ask you also this this other than the the guy singing on the corner outside outside <laughs> the corner shop. Uh, what was the uh, what was the first concert you ever attended? First concert I ever attended. 
1968. Okay. I believe it was October of that year. Uh, James Brown. You know what? This is no. This is no joke. When you said the year '68, I was gonna say it out loud that that was the concert. James Somehow, Brown. Yeah. James Brown at Memorial Auditorium in Buffalo, New York. The man had on all red, and Lord help me, did he rock this place or what? Right. <laughs> you know, James was the man. That's just how it was. Oh my God. Yeah, that that was the very first concert I had gone to. Wow. Yeah, I, you know, I, that was my wife's first concert, James Brown as well. And just even even the stuff that you hear a million times from him, you turn the system up in your car and it gives you goosebumps to this you day. To. Yeah, yeah, you have to. You, it it doesn't get old. It doesn't right. get old. He he made timeless music. You know, right. like the Temptations and the Supremes, this stuff that's going to be around and. That's that's what I want for my stuff, mm, and right. that's what I want for my artists. You know, everybody to make something that'll last. You know, I want to hear something on a quiet storm, twenty years from now, and say, "Yeah, we did that." <laughs> and I'm sure it's going to happen. Yeah, well, we're working on it. <laughs> we're working on it. So, uh, Drew is my special guest, and the CD. Before we get into a couple tracks, um, I want to let the people know where you can pick it up. Right now, you can go to cdbaby.com. And at the search, you can type in Drew. It'll take you right up to his page. And also, it's from his own website, www.nokiss.8m.com. And it's the uh, numeral 8m.com. Um, do you want me to give out your email address if people want to contact you? Oh, yeah. Feel free. Okay. NKRecordsS at Netscape.net. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can contact Drew. Tell him you... Uh, we're feeling the the music on the show, but most importantly, support independent music. And uh, you know, we consider you local. Two and a half hours is is not far at all. Exactly, and, exactly. What is that like? Uh, Twelve hours by bus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> Thank God for the car, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah you you had a great real close. Yeah. So I mean, it, it's just <laughs> just a ways up north and. Uh, Actually, Albany, New York, when I used to drive out to Montreal, that, that was my halfway point, just about. Exactly. And, exactly. Uh, you know, they, it just uh, continued success. I know you're working real hard and, uh, you know, creative as ever with a lot of different people. So can't wait to see the live band. Well, thank you much. Thank you for having me. And uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to do the best we can for you. We're, we're looking forward to coming up and playing that concert series this summer. Yeah. You know <laughs> Drew and company. That's going to be a exactly. slamming show. Exactly. We're going to make it happen. So if you've uh, just tuned in, uh, we are going to be replaying it on the separate internet broadcast. Uh, folks know that uh, they, all they have to do is send me an email at eastwestdj at aol.com, and we'll, we'll send you the link for the rebroadcast as well. But uh, the music is not over. We're going to play two in a row to get people, I guess, in their Monday night mood, uh, dreaming and notions. From Drew on No Kiss Records. Thanks, Drew. Thank you. All right. This is Drew. I can't root for the Lakers, though. (laughs) (laughs) But good, good luck. Good luck. Thank you. 